Hi everyone, Jason from Makeara here with another project tutorial. And in this one, we're looking at tips and techniques for making multi-sided projects with our desktop CNC machines. There's plenty of reasons why you might wanna make a multi-sided project from a two-sided PCB to a more complex part or model. And we often wanna use our CNC mills to machine multiple faces on our stock materials. But of course, there's a number of different techniques that you might utilize to create a multi-sided project with your desktop CNC. One method is to use a fourth axis accessory that rotates the stock during machining, but that's not a technique we're going to be looking at in this tutorial video. For this tutorial, we're specifically looking at tips and techniques to create a two-sided project on a three axis configuration as we talk about fourth axis in a number of our other tutorials. So let's dive in. I find that one of the most effective and easiest methods for creating two-sided CNC projects is to be the use of alignment pins when flipping your stock. This is especially easy when your design has holes in it, like this fidget spinner example, as we can easily align the holes to the design itself. But you can also create holes around your design on your stock, so that way you can still use alignment pins when you flip your stock over without actually impacting your design. And that's super easy to do in Makeara Cam. In Makeara Cam, you can import your design and position it on the stock that's been adjusted to match the dimensions of the actual material you'll be using to create this project. If you're working with a 2D design instead of a 3D design like this one, you can first import the top 2D design file onto your project, then create a new WCS to rotate your stock horizontally and select what would be the default bottom left origin point on the stock once it's been flipped. You can then import the bottom 2D design on the new bottom WCS. If your files were designed together in CAD, then they will most likely be aligned upon importing. But you can also easily use the quick align tool or center to center tool to automatically align your designs across the two work coordinate systems. Back on the top of your design, we can use the 2D create tool to make a hole that can be used for the alignment pins on one side of the stock. The position for this first hole isn't actually that crucial, but what is important is for you to decide how many alignment pins you're gonna use. You need at least two to flip your stock over and keep it oriented in a square fashion, but you can also use four or six depending on what your design called for. You also wanna choose what size alignment pin you're gonna be working with, like the four millimeter pins that come with your CNC, or sometimes I actually find that using an end mill, like a 3.175 millimeter end mill works really well as an alignment pin, or I'll cut even longer alignment pins for certain projects if needed. Next, we wanna open the mirror and transform tool to select the hole that we've created. We can then mirror this hole over the stock center, as well as make a copy of the hole so we now have two perfectly centered holes on our stock. You can repeat this process again in the vertical axes if you're creating four alignment holes and so on. And this works great as long as you've set the size of your stock to match whatever size material you're gonna be working with in your CAM program. When you're making a project using alignment pins, we always recommend drilling into a more dense piece of wasteboard that's been fixed to the bed of your CNC as this will hold the position of the pins more effectively. And after you flip the stock over for the second side, you'll find that you don't actually need to use a corner bracket to align it, just the pins in order to square up and orient your design. So alignment pins are a really quick and effective way to create a multi-sided project, specifically a two-sided project, if you're just going to simply flip your stock over and align it based on its new orientation. But what if your design doesn't allow for any space for holes to be drilled? Or what if you wanna make a two, three, or even a six-sided project? Well, in that case, we typically recommend that you actually use the manual XYZ probe that comes with your CNC. The manual XYZ probe comes with your CNC as an alternative to using the auto Z probe when setting up your stock height at the start of a project. But it can also be used to find the X and Y position as well as the Z position, which is a very accurate way to align your project to your stock. For example, let's say I create a design in CAM that's centered on my stock as shown. After importing the design into the controller app, I can launch the run and config window to set my work origin offsets. But instead of manually entering a position, I'm gonna set this by XYZ probe. This will allow me to align the probing block to the corner of my stock, regardless of where the stock has been clamped onto the bed of my CNC, even if I'm using a vise as shown. The machine will then automatically find the origin points for X, Y, and Z of my stock, and then travel to this origin position after probing has completed. I can then remove the probing block and set the origin of my design to be located at the current position to start machining in the controller app. This again works great if you've aligned your design correctly based on the origin of your stock and cam, and if you're going to rotate your stock and machine it on multiple sides. This is because I'm able to actually unclamp my stock, rotate it, and then relock it down in the vise or clamps or whatever I'm using, and then use the XYZ probe to once again find the XYZ position of the stock origin, and that's okay even if it's not in the exact same spot that it was before because it's based on where it is now. 
Now, the last method I'm gonna show you is perhaps the simplest, but also the one with the greatest margin for human error if you're not careful. The first thing that you need to know is the boundary size of your design for all sides of your part. Let's say, for example, I'm working with a piece of stock that's three inches by five inches, and my design is 1.5 by three inches as shown. On my stock, I can mark where I want my design to be placed in the X and Y axes by measuring inwards from the edge before clamping my stock to the bed of my CNC. I can then use the do margin feature to check the alignment of my design by entering the offset that I calculated and then using the scan margin feature of the automatic Z probe to trace the perimeter using the laser pointer built into the probe. If the laser doesn't perfectly align with my drawn marks, I can adjust the offsets and test it again. And a handy tool to speed this manual alignment process up a bit is that if you actually double tap the probe, it will automatically turn it on so you can use the laser pointer to check its position. You can also use the go to and set origin functions in the controller to manually set and travel to your work origin positions as well. After manually testing your positions, you'll find that these values are retained when you open the run and config window to start machining your part. You can then repeat the same alignment process when you flip your stock over for the other side. For whatever you're making or however you're looking to fix the material to your CNC, know that there's a number of ways to set and align your projects with ease and effectiveness in any circumstance for a multi-sided project. Thanks for watching and of course please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more projects on the official Makeara channel.